Zeus gathered all the useful things together in a jar and put a lid on it, then left the jar in human hands. But man had no self-control, and he wanted to know what was in that jar. So he pushed the lid aside, letting those things go back to the abode of the gods. So all the good things flew away, soaring high above the earth, and Elpis was the only thing left. When the lid was put back on the jar, Elpis was kept inside. This is why Elpis, or Hope, alone, is still found among the people promising that she will bestow upon each of us in the good things that have gone away. Star Wars is the myth of our generation. From the hero's journey to the reflection of modern values, there's a lot of comparisons that can be made about this epic story and the stories of many different cultural mythologies. Much like Aesop's fables, I believe more than anything else, Star Wars is a story about hope. And today, I will be telling you exactly why Star Wars is our modern fable, and how hope is the main message that resonates with people today more than ever. So what do I mean by myth? Well. According to Dr. Nathan Snow at Utah Tech University, quote, myths are what unite across cultures. Every culture has their own myths, but Campbell provided that all their cores, they are more alike than different. What he's referring to is Campbell's work, The Hero's Journey, a pattern describing the cycle of the call to adventure, crossing the threshold, the ordeal, and a return, found in many classical myths, including King Arthur, Gilgamesh, Arabian Nights, and many, many more. Throughout this cycle, messages reflecting the ideal traits and concepts of humanity are told throughout, such as honor, friendship, perseverance, love, and in Star Wars' case, hope. Star Wars as the modern myth once again reflects our desired and ideal concepts, and hope is one that is desired by many in the modern day. But why hope? If hope is a positive expectation, then what are we hoping to expect? What is causing us to strive for hope? I believe, more than anything else, that the root of hope is fear. Fear of oppression, fear of exploitation, and the fear of death, all things that the empire and our governments enact. Today, millions are heavily oppressed within their systems of government. The recent rigged elections in Venezuela, Project 2024, and the highly corrupt governments of Yemen, Saudi Arabia, North Korea, and so many more are just a few of many examples of this. Chapman University's ninth annual fear survey conducted in 2023 has reported corrupt government officials as its number one reported fear, with over 60% reporting being afraid or very afraid. To give some context, this is 6% above the fear of economic collapse, 8% above Russia using nuclear weapons, 8% above World War III, and nearly 10% above the fear of loved ones being seriously ill or dying. A corrupt government has been the number one top fear nine out of nine years that this survey has been conducted. This is the root of Star Wars' story. A story of humanity's biggest fear being conquered and defeated by a ragtag group of people just wanting to live the way they want to live. I believe that this fear of tyranny stems less from the act itself, but the feeling that we as just regular individuals can do little about it. A 538 article written by Amelia Thomas Devois, Jasmine Mitani, and Laura Brunneron states, quote, Our system doesn't make it particularly easy to vote, and the decisions to carve out a few hours to cast a ballot requires a sense of motivation that's hard for some Americans to muster every two to four years. Enthusiasm about the candidates, belief in the importance of voting itself, a sense that anything can change as a result of a single vote. According to the same article, between 35 and 60% of eligible voters don't cast a ballot in the U.S. presidential elections. Despite the overwhelming fear that Americans possess, many do not vote. So, if we don't believe our vote matters, what can we even do? How can we fight against this fear? The idea of a rebel alliance reinforces the idea that you can do something about it and that you are not alone in this fight. Examples of this are found everywhere in all walks of Star Wars media. The original trilogy was all about rebelling and fighting back with Luke, Leia, Han, Chewie, the droids R2 and C-3PO, and Obi-Wan all working together against the Empire. 
Return of the Jedi showed a great example of unity against oppression during the briefing on destroying the Death Star. The sequel trilogy has Rey, Poe, and Finn join up with their old cast once again to fight against the First Order. The Jedi try to fight back against the Emperor's plot against democracy once they find out. Heck, we have a whole series called Star Wars Rebels centered around all of this. This speech within Star Wars Rebels says it best when it comes to getting up and taking action to reform the system. We stand together as allies. I hereby resign from the Senate to fight for you. Not from the distant halls of politics, but from the front lines. We will not rest until we bring an end to the Empire. Until we restore our Republic. The idea of being a rebel is the way George Lucas gives us hope against tyranny. This is why, in the new movies, the New Republic had to fail. To reinforce the message of fighting back against oppression. To show that there is hope, even when the world seems to be against you. The idea of revolution isn't anything new. For those born in the United States, like George Lucas, the idea of revolutions is the staplehood of our founding as a country. According to National Geographic, quote, a wave of revolutions took place in the 1700s, an era commonly known as the Age of Enlightenment. Revolutions in France, in Latin America, and in the American colonies. In all of these countries, the revolution not only changed the political systems and replaced them with new ones, but they altered public belief and brought about sweeping changes in society as a whole. This idea of changing all of society is artfully displayed in Star Wars, especially with the prequels showing the flaws within the system and the original trilogy doing away with the current corrupt form of government that's going around blowing up planets or, you know, banning essential student organizations within our universities, as an example. Star Wars is not asking us to revolt. However, it does give us an answer, a roadmap, as a response to whatever comes. I believe that through this amazing sci-fi series, George Lucas, A. Filoni, J.J. Abrams, and all the other writers behind the series wanted to share their message of rising against tyranny, rebelling against the status quo, and taking up the fight against evil. And that, over anything else, gives us hope for a brighter future. I hope this series was as fun to watch as it was to make. I didn't know what to really expect from a study about Star Wars, but I've definitely left it with more appreciation for the franchise and how one could look deeper into the idea behind a creation. And that, right there, is going to change my viewing of Star Wars and any other movie I watch in the future, forever. Thank you so much for watching. For more videos and to check out our live streams here in Blue Skies Are Grey, click here. Thanks, and have a good one.